Good evening, and uh, we had a great Lord's Day yesterday, and if you were paying attention and listening to the Lord's the service on the Lord's Day, you know that this week, our Psalm of the Week is Psalm 107, and it's a much longer psalm than Psalm 91, um, but with God's help, we're going to try to get through it, and I'm going to try to keep these Bible studies within five minutes, and so pray that God would help me. Um, today, I want to draw your attention to the first three verses that we see here. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Psalm 107 is a long psalm, um, and we're going to look at it in depth each day. But I want you to notice these first three verses. First of all, the entire psalm is written from the perspective of a Jew who is looking back throughout history of the Jewish people and recognizing that God has been faithful to his people from generation to generation. And he speaks of the different um, times when God has delivered them. And you'll see that repeated all throughout Psalm 107. The final judgment we find in the Old Testament, uh, before we get into the New Testament, is the Jewish people being drug off into Babylonian captivity because of their sin and wickedness and rebellion against God. And God tells them they're going to be there for 70 years before they are brought back uh, to the city again. And so this is a Jew who knows the Babylonian captivity and knows God has brought them back together again. So he is writing from that perspective and that time in history. And here's what he says. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Ima imagine that. He's sitting at the end of Babylonian captivity and he says, stop and give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Do you know what that means? That means stop and give, give intelligent thought don't just say blatantly God is good, but think and meditate upon God's goodness in your own life. Have you stopped to do that today? That's why we have a praise time in our church is to remember that God is good. And here's one of the reasons that he says he's good, for his mercy endureth forever. God is good in many ways to us, but in, a, in the main way, he, the word mercy here is it means he does not give us what we deserve. God does not give you and I what we deserve. If you're a believer and you know Christ as your Lord and Savior, God has forgiven your sin. He saved you. What we deserve is death and hell and separated from God forever. But here, his mercy endureth forever. And as God's people were reminded that just like the children of Israel, there are times when we sin, when we do things that are wrong, and yet God does still doesn't give us what we deserve. He is merciful to us. And we see that here in verse number two. He says, those who know the Lord, those who have been redeemed, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. That means speak often about it. Those who have been redeemed from the enemy should speak a lot about God's goodness and God's mercy. For he hath redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. And then I want you to notice what else he says in verse 3. And gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, the north and from the south. What do we see here? It is, again, another picture. Let those who have been redeemed, let the children of Israel who know God's goodness and his mercy, let them say so, how God has delivered them out of Egyptian bondage. He's delivered them out of Babylonian captivity. And as a believer, he has delivered us out of the grips of Satan and delivered us from death, hell, and the grave. So let us speak often about it. But specifically in verse number three, he gathered them out of the lands. The Almighty God who used Babylonian captivity and Egyptian bondage to deal with God's people is also powerful enough to bring us back again and restore us. And God uses, we see God using times of... Uh, Pestilence, like we're going through right now, times of captivity, of destruction, to get God's people's attention. And then he's able to bring us back to himself. And so today, as you look at this psalm, and we're going to go throughout this psalm and look at it verse by verse. Um, but one thing I'm encouraged of, and you'll notice in this psalm, God always uses hard times, like we're going through right now, to get his people's attention. There are some people that want to say the coronavirus right now is God's judgment upon ungodly people. 
I would be careful to say that. You're not a prophet, and you don't have biblical authority to say that this is God's judgment on ungodliness. What we can say is that throughout history, that God oftentimes uses these difficult situations like we're going through right now to get his people's attention. And God is using this time right now to get your attention and my attention. And may we, may we look into God's word and, and meditate upon his goodness and remember there's no situation he's not able to bring us out of and to bring us closer to himself. I'm excited about Psalm 107. I hope you are as well. May God use this to speak to your heart tonight. God bless.